Hey guys, welcome to the Resistance Barbell Club. We're gonna do a deadlifting tutorial today with Justin. Hi. He's a competitive uh, power lifter and he's gonna show us the finer points of deadlifting today. So let's pay attention and the next time you come in the gym, uh, you can feel confident when you walk up to the bar and uh, start doing some deadlifts. This is a very simple movement. It can be done by anybody for anybody. This isn't just revolving around power lifters or bodybuilders either. Mm -hmm. This is a good mechanic for a lot of other sports and just general movement too. Your daily activity in life usually revolves around you bending down to pick up something. The deadlift is gonna help your spine, your stability, your core, and everything else as you continue to age. So that's Absolutely. just more reason to deadlift. Today, we're gonna be learning regular conventional deadlift. So first step that I like to be able to figure out is my positioning. A lot of bodies will be accustomed to being able to keep the bar about mid-foot. A lot of people like to kind of imagine that their shoelaces are right under the bar. It's about an inch away from your shin, but if you don't feel like busting out a ruler on top of mm -hmm. your shoelaces is a good way to do it too. Some people like to have their toes out, pointing outward. Some people like to have them just parallel to their shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, generally, most people like to keep their feet within their shoulders, but as far as toes pointing in or out, um, that is completely up to you and whatever is comfortable. There are things in powerlifting called cues. These are just helpful reminders for you to be able to remember how to perform the lift. Mm -hmm. For the deadlift, there's a lot of people that like to imagine that there are pencils on their armpits and they like to okay. squeeze those pencils. Okay. I heard from a friend of mine that he said he likes to pretend that there's oranges under his armpits and oranges. he wants to squeeze the juice out of it. <laughs> okay. okay. If you were to perform that yeah. in the air, you're... Yeah. Tightening your lats. There are a few ways to be able to grip the deadlift bar. One of them is an overhand, where you are just applying both your hands over the bar and you are just gripping it like normal. Right. The other grip, which is more popular within a lot of athletes and casual deadlifters, is an over underhand. Mm -hmm. Your dominant hand is the one that goes over, and your least dominant hand is the one that goes under. So, going under like this. This is also a popular grip to be able to do. Normally you will switch to that positioning once you start overloading the bar with more weight. This stops the bar from twisting into itself or twisting out, giving you the ability to grip the bar better. Pretending that the floor, the platform, is sort of a leg press is one good cue to be able to understand how the bar should be moving. So once you get your tight tension up, stuff like that, you got the, get your grip down, your back is tensioned, you want to pretend that this is a leg drive coming up. Easier said than done, but mm -hmm. applying those steps will be able to give you a more successful deadlift and a more full body movement. One helpful tip is also to be aware of where your hip placement is also, because mm -hmm. once you're bending down the bar, some people are confused as whether how much to bend at the knee, how much to mm -hmm. actually bend down at the hips. Mm -hmm. A good rule of thumb is to keep your hip crease in between where your shoulders are and when your knees are. Seems like a big range, but once you start getting down to it, it becomes a little bit more fickle to understand where you should actually be. Mm -hmm. So, what I mean by hip being underneath your knee, usually some people will, will squat their deadlifts. So when they get down like this, like this. And you can see here, my hip crease is very close to my knee. Yeah, Essentially, I'm squatting the deadlift. Mm -hmm. Whereas the opposing, idea is I'm just completely bending over and you can see here that my hip crease is over my shoulders. Essentially not using my legs at all for this move. Mm -hmm. That is where right. your low back right. issues will come. One of the more important things you should be doing upon any compound lift really should be bracing. Now bracing is the movement to breathe in a lot of air up into your stomach to be able to stabilize your spine and abdomen to be able to perform the lift with proper stability. Mm -hmm. Now, how to brace, you wanna pretend that you are filling up a balloon in your stomach. It is not a lateral breathing technique, it is breathing in and expanding the trunk of your body all around. Now, some people, they'll breathe in with their shoulders and they'll, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That it would be the incorrect way because there is no air coming in to wherever your spine is going, mm -hmm. it needs to be. So. One of the things we like to do is a sandwich test. Now you can use your thumbs here and kind of collapse into the side of your body here and breathe in. And you'll be able to feel the, the sides of your stomach and your stomach itself expand. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel it expanding, try to work on it a little bit so you can feel it start expanding. Once you do feel it expand, you are doing your bracing correctly. Now, 
once you got the, all the oxygen up there, you want to apply that brace. So applying pressure, you'll be pushing out your stomach towards this way to be able to push your spine out this way. This keeps everything stable and making sure nothing is moving while you're lifting, which is probably the most important step on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody needs to remember that. Watch that a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> Perform the sandwich test right. to be able to make sure that you are applying that brace correctly. Okay. Um, some people like to brace up top. Some people like to brace while they're down here. I like to do both. I can't remember where I learned this technique from, but I'll breathe in just a little bit, apply a small brace at the top, mm -hmm. and just before the lift, I'll breathe in again and apply a second brace to be able to create more of a structure and more pressure for my spine to stay stable. Right. Stable spine is a stronger lift and nobody's getting hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's the main thing. Yeah. Let's have fun, not get hurt, get strong. Okay, now we're gonna demonstrate the steps again. Um, this time we're gonna be under a heavier load. We got 495 on the bar, nothing too heavy, but we're gonna show and show you what it looks like on a heavier load. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a bit more of a struggle, a bit more work, but keeping up this, these steps will maintain that form that you're gonna be looking for when you deadlift. Now remember those steps, position, brace, lock and grip, leg drive, hinge. Those are the steps on how to deadlift. If you have any more questions, you can find us at the Resistance Barbell Club or ask us on the YouTube page, comment. You can check us out on Instagram, the Resistance Barbell Club. You can find you me like, find at Justin. Real Yoda, probably somewhere. He's gonna put it somewhere here. Yeah. If you're not sure where to continue or how to start your training program, whether or not you wanna join powerlifting or physique mm -hmm. um, training. Uh, we also offer nutritional programs too over at Tomahawk Sports Science. You can find us on Instagram at Tomahawk Sports Science or TomahawkSportsScience.com. We offer programming with a select few coaches that'll drive you, that'll bring up your game. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. <laughs>